That looks better. Okay. Just let me know in the chat if you are here. I see most people have done that already. People are <laughs> getting the swing of this. Just gonna take attendance quick and then let's chat about what we're doing today. Hey Liam, good morning. Which light? All of these. I'm down here right now, sweetie. Honey, last night you left all of these lights on. Did I? I I am I'm, I'm in my class right now, just so you know. Do you want to come and say hi? Okay. You coming to say hi? Come on over. Just watching. You're just watching? To see what it looks like? This is the chat over here. This is where my students can talk to me. They're all letting me know here that they're here today. Right now, so that I can sit, put it in the attendance and say, yep, that person is here. And then this is what they see. They can see this. Do you want to come over and say hi? You can wave if you want. You don't want to? Okay. What's that? You do? Come on over. Come on over so that they can see you in the camera. Just <laughs> If you say hi, the microphone's right here if you want to say hi. No? Okay. Sure, yeah. Yeah, you want to just get it out of the way? Sure, no problem. For sure you can, buddy.
<laughs> they say hi back, Liam. Excuse me. All right, guys. Oh, Damer, let me get you. Okay. Let's try to know what we're up to today. Everybody coming down here. We got the cats. We got everybody <laughs> coming in to say hi. Um, all right, guys. So today's day 17. So so far, um, we we've just basically been looking at anatomy and function of things. Um, and today is sort of like our last physical component of the plant that we're going to examine. So today is um, well, at least sh the second half is going to be that. So this the second half. This is in learning block two. Um, we're going to do a uh, dissection of a flower. So I'll, st I'll start that right at the beginning of learning block two at 11.05. Um, I think Liam may <laughs> want to join us. I don't know. He kind of changed his mind yesterday. But I, anyway, I have a flower. We're going to, uh, we're going to dissect it uh, and take a look at the parts inside. Um, and that's, that's sort of like the last functional component of a plant that we're going to examine. So we looked at the leaf, we looked at the stem, we looked at the roots. And so the flower is like the reproductive organs of the plant. We're going to finish with that. Um, and then the, what you guys gonna, are going to be doing in block A is sort of looking at um, an important function of plants. There's a little bit of anatomy here too, um, but it's mostly going to be referencing anatomy that we've already talked about which is um, xylem and phloem and kind of how the xylem and phloem run through the leaf stem and root so um the block a starts off with a, a really cool video uh, I, I love this guy's youtube channel um where he talks about um the physics of how to transport water up a stem um and and when you think about it like in a in a small plant like uh like a house plant or something that doesn't really seem like a particularly impressive thing i mean the, the plant is essentially pumping water a foot you know or you know two feet off the ground that's nothing spectacular but when you're looking at something like a like a sequoia tree or something like that that's pumping uh water you know 200 feet off of the ground that the actual physics behind how to get water pumped up that high is like really complex it's, it's quite difficult to get water that high off of the ground a lot of energy potentially could be required so plants um, have a strategy for getting water up uh, and it's it's really crazy um, what 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 they actually employ like in, in terms of the physics of it in order to get water up that high and to transport that much water because it's actually a very substantial amount of water so uh, this video is, is mostly talking about water transport uh, there's two types of transport in plants, which we, we kind of referred to a little bit already. So we've got um, we got xylem transporting water, uh, which is mo this video is mostly referencing xylem transport. And then the other component of it is you've got to transport the nutrients around in the phloem. So you've got to transport around uh, sugar and things. It's mostly sugar. Obviously, there's other things dissolved in the liquid as well that isn't sugar. But um, we're, we're mostly going to be discussing the sugar component of the transport because uh, that, that's its main function. So you're making sugar in the leaf, 
when you do photosynthesis. And then you got to send it somewhere to store it. Maybe you're sending it to the trunk. I mean, this is depending on the kind of plant. So monocots are often storing their sugars in the plant. Uh, some of them store uh, some of them store their sugar in the flower, which is very odd. Um, but so that's quite rare. But but like for example, like a corn, uh, corn is storing the sugar in seeds in, in the reproductive organ in, in in the corn itself. I guess it's not that unusual. Um, the, the purpose of that for the corn plant is to provide nutrients for the, the seed for the for the germinating plant that would come out of the corn so I actually that, that's not true most plants are transporting some sugars there but corn is primarily storing sugar for that purpose whereas lots of other plants will have a large storage of sugar for the adult plant in the root for example so a potato plant would be a good example or a carrot would be a good example of a plant that is storing a lot of sugar in the root uh, and that's where that's why potatoes are like starchy because it's it's sugar storage for the plant and same thing for carrots so it's basically like a big sugar storage facility underground and some of them store it in 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 the uh uh stem like like the sugar cane for example which would which is primarily storing a lot of that um carbohydrate in the stem so you got to move that sugar around and once you're done should probably uh, turn that off. Baby's up. <laughs> um, when you um, oh, that's my train of thought here. Right. Uh, you also have to store uh, potentially move it back. So, for example, in the springtime, um, you got to get all of your sugars back to the the uh, leaves because you're you got to build the leaves. So at that point, um, the exact opposite process is in play here. Um, so it, it's a lot more complex than um, than the water transport because the water transport is just up. You're, you're going from the roots to the leaf, uh, and there there are some there's some complex physics involved here that you're going to see in this video. Um, but but it's one it's one way transport. You always got to move the water up uh, for to use for photosynthesis. But sugar, on the other hand, is a process that requires some coordination because you have to send it wherever you want it given the circumstances so if you need sugar in a certain place you got to pump it there and it's not like a an animal's circulatory system where it's a continuous pump where there's just like always blood going in a circuit and you just dump whatever you want to transport into the circuit and it'll get where you want it to go eventually if you just put it in the circuit uh, this is a different strategy because it's not a continuous circulation so you're, you're basically moving one piece at a time it's more like a bucket brigade uh, like where you're passing bucket to bucket to like put out a fire. So it's more similar to that. So anyway, this first video talks specifically about water transportation. Um, and then the second component here is sort of an overview. This is a little video lesson with me. Uh, it's an overview. And it's the same notes package, by the way, that you've already been using. Um, is a uh, summary of both types of transport. So there's a little bit of anatomy involved here. What kind of cells are involved in transport? Um, what's that? Oh. Hopefully, somebody's on that. Um, for uh, because the xylem and phloem are different, the cells look different. So we're going to talk about the structural differences between xylem and phloem, uh, and then the differences in how they actually coordinate transport. As I mentioned, one is one unidirectional, goes in one direction. That's the the xylem for water transport, and then the the phloem has a different strategy that it uses for transport. Uh, and anyway, I talk about that in this lesson here. So there's some questions that go along with that. Um, you can try if um, if you uh, would like some extra information. There, the, there's a chapter in the textbook on this. Chapter number it is. It says it at the top of the note as well. But um, this is chapter 12.5 uh, in the textbook. So if you're looking for more information um, for completing uh, the questions there, although I think I think it's pretty much all contained within the note, so you probably won't need that. And then there's a little extra quiz. Just test your knowledge at the end. See if you're comfortable with the information from from the note. Okay, so that that's learning block one. At the end of learning block one, you may consider um, reading the introduction to flowers on page 14 in your course notes if you have some extra time. 
Okay, I'm going to be referencing it a little bit when I do the flower dissection at the beginning of learning block two. You don't necessarily have to have read it, uh, but it helps. Um, you'll be you'll be generally familiar with what we're looking at in the flower. If you have a flower at home, um, again, it would be helpful probably for you if you looked at your own flower. It would be even more helpful if you didn't have the same flower as me. Um, I've got an, uh, what's the name of this plant? Asperillus? It, it's like those big red um, flowers that people grow at Christmas time. Asperillus, I think that's right. Oh, I totally spelled that wrong. That's Oh, that's completely wrong. I, I wonder if I've got the name completely wrong here. Um, <laughs> what if I type red Christmas flower? <laughs> Let's really dumb it down. Not Poncetta, the other one. Uh, oh, shoot. I'm not going to be able to find this now. Poncettas is what people often buy at Christmas. So it's... Uh, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, well, anyway, I'll have to look it up. I can't remember the name of the flower, but... If you have if you have a poinsettia, that'll work. Uh, in fact, that's perfect. Uh, perfect example of a flower. Um... We can we can use whatever you got if you do have anything and again, it's better if it's different than what I have um, It would also be helpful um, if you asked questions in the chat I know I know this is a, in a unique difference in communication here um, Oh, that's I forgot to mention uh, At the very beginning here. Oh, did I not update this? Uh, hold on. Let me refresh this Yes, I did. No, okay so if, this, if you don't see this at the top of your page and you may need to refresh it, but I did put a course survey there, um, which I'd like you guys to take two seconds to do today at some point. Honestly, it's really short. It's just like a couple questions about how things are going for you in the course. Uh, I'm really quickly going, I wanna add a question really quick. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, before, before you do it, I'm, I'm curious if people are interested in keeping the the YouTube live which I think it's been working okay it, it's not as um, easy for us to communicate with each other or perhaps um, people would be more interested here's my survey that I made Uh, if people would be more interested in moving to a Google Meet where um, it would be easier for people to jump in. Uh, I, I'm bringing it up now because I've noticed, well, my son is doing Google, Google Meet every day for his kindergarten class. Um, and I think it's working okay for them. Uh, no, it's a much smaller class. I think there's only five kids in it. Um, currently, a lot of the kids are not participating. Um, but I'm just going to have one question here because I want to know if people are more interested in moving to that. Let me just put it on here. Because I can make it in Google Meet. They just added this functionality. Uh, I can make it the same, basically, um, as as this. In other words, like I, I can do the screen, me, the iPad. There's like a way to stream this into Google um, Google Meet. So it really it would look the same ish. I'm, maybe it wouldn't look exactly the same. I'm not sure. There, we might have to experiment a little bit. I haven't really used Google Meet all that much. Um, but it, it is a little bit more interactive. There's like a way to put up your hand and uh, people could jump in and say something. Um, so anyway, I asked that question on the survey. I just added it. If you get an opportunity today, um, I would really appreciate it. I'm going to review it at the end of the school day. So if you could do it during the school day today at some point, just do the course survey. 
Um, like I said, it's at the beginning of that content here for day 17. There's there's the link right there at the top. Um, and just just let me how you're, know how you're doing. I, I, I provided an opportunity there for you to just tell me, um, is there anything that you feel like the course would be better if it had it in it? Um, for, do you want to do some small group work um, which we can figure out how to coordinate. Um, I just, before I try a lot of those things, I, I, I would like to know a little bit from you, like, what do you actually want? I, I don't want to like force stuff on you, um, that people are like, oh no, hundred percent. Everybody does not want this. Oh, okay. Well, I probably am not going to like spend 20 hours and, and rejig the course to, to like have a bunch of that in it if people hate it. So, um, so anyway, I, just just to get your feedback, it'd be really helpful. So um, just just take a few minutes. You don't have to answer every question. Um, some some of them are required questions that I really really would like to know your answer to, um, and then some of them are just optional. Like, uh, do you have any suggestions or whatever? You, I, I think you can just skip those questions if if you're not interested. Okay. So, um, but it's really short. It's only like uh, six seven questions or eight questions, um, and they're they're quick questions. So, so if you get a chance, please do that. Um, maybe, maybe do it at the very beginning would be helpful. Um, anyway, so uh, you guys are going to do that part. Uh, that's on transport, and that's for learning block one. If you get an opportunity to read the introduction of flowers on page 14 in your course notes, do that. Um, then we'll do the flower dissection in learning block two. You can do that reading afterwards if you'd like. Um, then there is a table on page 598 um, of your textbook. Uh, sorry. Sorry, I'm getting confused here. You read page 598 in your textbook. There is a table in your course notes about flowers, the parts of a flower. And you're just going to go through and summarize what the function is for each of the parts. Okay, that's the, that's the stuff you need to know. So like um, uh, stamen is like, well, what, what's the parts of the stamen? What does the stamen do? What's its role in the flower? Okay, and then like that, you're going to add that in. Okay. Um, in the end, like that's what I really would like you to know about the flower. Functionally, and this I can't really assess you on this, but functionally, it would be good if at the end you could look at a flower and then you know what you're looking at. That's kind of the point of this. So, so you you know you see a flower in a field and you say, okay, well, I get what the parts are for on this flower. It might look different to the flower we do that I do, uh, but hopefully you can pick out the same parts on that flower. So I am, I'm going to look at some pictures of some different flowers as well. If you have a flower at home uh, and you want to send me a picture, just email me a quickly a picture of what your flower looks like. That's also useful because then I can have a quick look and even pop it up here uh, so that people can see what your flower looks like and, and we can discuss what the differences are between your flower and my flower because it, the parts, again, are not going to probably look exactly the same, um, but th they're all there in general. Okay, which we'll get to when we do that. Okay, so anyway, that's that part, the flower part. That won't actually take very long. I mean, a flower is not like dissecting a pig or something. It only takes a couple minutes. There's not a lot of parts in there. So um, I also have a really cool documentary. Um, would a fern work? Ferns don't have flowers. So no. Um, it's got to be a monocot or a dicot. The... Um, it, ferns are pteridophytes uh, and they don't they don't produce flowers which is unfortunate um so no <laughs> if that's the only plant you've got at home sorry <laughs> the um i mean you could we could look at the reproductive structures of a fern uh that's like a whole other ball game it's um they're they 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 reproduce completely differently than flowered plants they actually drop their sperm and egg what is ostensibly an egg into water so they require water for reproduction flowing water uh which usually happens when it, like an area floods or something you only find ferns in like fairly wet areas because they, they need water for reproduction and then the sperm and egg uh the sperm actually swim uh, I, I should push, post a video of this it's it's really crazy the the we're talking about plants here by the way they're plant sperm swims through the water and finds the egg to fertilize in the water and then that becomes the germinating plant for the fern um, and you can actually like under a microscope you can see them swimming they're, they're not even very small um, anyway I think that's crazy it's totally different than what flowering plant reproduction looks like but but that's that's what ferns do so they don't actually have flowers unfortunately um, so there's a there's a great documentary here um, called the power of flowers 
It's a three-part series. This is episode two, which is all about the flowers specifically. Um, I should, sorry, the documentary is called How to Grow a Planet. This episode is called uh, The Power of Flowers. There's two other episodes, one and three, um, and they are looking at a different part of plants. Um, one looks at the evolution of roots and how plants moved from being water-based when they were more protists to being land-based plants. Uh, it's it, fascinating. Uh, if Honestly, if you ever get a chance to watch the other two parts of this documentary, um, I, I'm not a botanist. I don't really like love plants. Uh, I mean, it's not my favorite area of biology. Um, would a flower bud work? Maybe. Maybe. That's a good question, Ella. I bet you... You could try it. You could try it. If you don't mind if you don't mind sacrificing your flower bud, hopefully it's something super important at home. Um, but I think if you cut into the bud, we could still find these parts in the middle. Um, it, it, de- it depends how developed the flower bud is. If it's right about to bloom, then you can probably find everything in it. Um, if it's like weeks from blooming, uh, it might just look like a bunch of goo. <laughs> so then you, you might not get too much out of it. It's sort of like dissecting a fetal pig that's only like um, like a month old or something like that. When you dissect it, it, it looks like like uh, nothing. Like you, you can't really tell anything. So um, you could try it. You could try it. If you, if you want to if you want to cut that one open, if you are going to do it, uh, try and cut it right down the center in half. Um, like vertically, like if you're holding the the bud like this, like try and whoosh, cut it directly in half, uh, and then try and send me a picture of the of the like the middle, like the center, um, uh, from one side, like you know, turn the half and sorry, it'll be this way towards camera here, um, and then just like show me a picture. I I can, I might be able to help you identify the structures inside. Maybe, hopefully, hopefully, if you get right down the center, we might go right through the, like the female part in the center. Do you know what kind of plant it is that's budding? It's no big deal if you don't. One day I'm actually, I, I've got it on ultra low latency here. So uh, one day I'm going to actually measure the amount of time it takes um for you guys to hear me after I say something. I don't know how long it is. I, I'm hoping it's only like two or three seconds now, but um, okay, I'll take that as a no, Ella, that you don't know. It's, um, but if, if, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, but no big deal. No big, I, I would look it up though. Um, I, I personally will look it up for you. Christmas cactus. Hmm. Well, um, some dicot. Let me investigate. Let me investigate that one. You you may be able to. You may be able to. Um, anyway, great documentary. Getting back to what I was talking about here. Um, this this episode of the documentary is all about re- plant reproduction. Why flowers evolved, how flowers evolved in the plant. And so it is going to reference a little bit of the stuff from the evolution unit, which is great. It's a connection between this unit and the evolution unit. Um but it also talks, you know, about the structures of the flower, why seeds are so important, the difference between seeded plants, which are monocots and dicots, and other types of plants like gymnosperms and ferns and whatever. Uh, and it's not it's not dry at all. It's very visual. Uh, it's a it's a pretty uh, documentary to look at. It's it's very fascinating. Um, so I, I'm sure you've watched some really dry documentaries where somebody just drones and uh, maybe a lot like this class <laughs> but this this, this this is actually a really uh, entertaining documentary so i highly highly recommend it um and it talks about uh, it, it's um it will reference a whole bunch of stuff about flowers that we're going to talk about and you guys are going to read about so uh, and then there are a couple questions from the text so it's, uh, it's page 602 7 and 8 don't forget to put those in your document that you're going to submit at the end okay plus a little exit quiz that's mostly on um structures of the flower and what they do Okay, uh, I'll be available in the Google Meet at the end. One quick thing before I get you guys started here um, is I just wanted to mention that we have one more day of plants after this. So it's, uh, it would be day 18. Um, and we're going to do that when you come back in the next block because this is the last day of this block. So um, we are going to talk about sexual reproduction 
um, in a little bit more detail uh, for plants. So obviously flowers are part of sexual reproduction, but we're going to talk about the whole reproductive strategy of plants, um, which is referenced in, in the documentary as well. Um, and we're also going to talk a little bit about asexual reproduction. So, I mean, maybe at home before you've made a cutting of a plant and actually, uh, like turn that cutting into uh, a mature plant by like growing the cutting, that's a form of asexual reproduction. Lots of plants are able to do that. Uh, th there's, a, there's a, there's a number of different, uh, asexual reproduction strategies. So we're going to talk about those. Uh, and then we're going to start our assignment. So the reason I bring this up today, I don't, I don't want to go through all the material from the first day back, but I did want to mention the assignment right now because some of you are probably thinking, oh, we come back for a day and then we like have to do an assignment that day. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's obviously this course moves super fast, but if you have free time and you do not have to start this, I'll make that really clear. You don't have to start this, but if you have free time, you may want to look ahead at this project you're like I'm done everything um, and it may just take the burden off you maybe you've got phys ed next block or something and it's just not a lot of homework I don't know what you guys do maybe maybe phys ed is a really intense course or I, I'm not sure but um, I would guess it wouldn't be but I don't know um, what we're gonna do is you guys are going to be doing another presentation um, this is like again through um, uh, where you're gonna like screen cap your screen record your um, presentation from a Google slideshow. Um, and, and this one is all about uh, the importance of a specific plant. So I'm just really quickly going to talk about this. I will I will review this again um, when we come back. But in, in case people are interested in getting started on this early, I just wanted to mention it because uh, uh, anyway, you, you may have extra time and you may want to you may want to do this. So plants are hugely important. Obviously, they are our primary source of uh, nutrition on Earth. They are the bottom of every food chain. Um, so I want you to pick a plant that is important to humanity. It doesn't have to be for food. So it could be important as a uh, religious or cultural icon. Uh, may maybe this there's a particular aspect of this plant that is used in uh, religious or cultural celebrations. Uh, as a building material, this is all listed here, by the way, building material, food source, maybe we use it to make pharmaceuticals, drugs, uh, it's or an ingredient in Aboriginal medicine, uh, we use it potentially to stop floods or control erosion, uh, or it's used for recreation somehow. Uh, it has a, it has a significance to humanity, okay? Ideally, it'll make your presentation uh, easier to do if your plant is important in more than one of those contexts. So, I mean, if you're picking something that's purely important for, um, like I'll give you an example. Like if you pick a rose, okay? Roses are important. Um, they have a cultural context. They're used as a, like a gift. Um, but other than a cultural context, they, they don't really have it's super useful properties for humans. Um, they're pretty. But so you could pick a rose. That, that could be something that you could do. But there's not as much to talk about there. Uh, but if you pick a plant like um, bamboo or hemp, uh, th there's like a million things that you could discuss there. You could talk about how it's used potentially as food. So hemp has hemp hearts. Uh, it's a food source. Uh, hemp it can be used as a building material. It can be used as a food source. Uh, hemp is potentially used as an ingredient in medicine. Um, so again, you can, you can expand here. Uh, there, there are lots of plants you could potentially pick that have lots of uses and give you lots of stuff to talk about. So uh, I recommend that. You, you don't have to do that. Um, you can spend a long time talking about the history of the cultural use of roses uh, if you're really interested in roses or, again, whatever plant. But uh, it does have to be something that is culturally uh, or that is important for humanity. So, again, try and direct your, your choice to something that's specifically important for humanity. Um, just like uh, in the other research project, you're going to create a research document where you list all of your sources in APA, and then beside each one, you're going to tell me what did you learn from that specific source in point form. Uh, and then you're going to create a slideshow with this information in it. So again, the, the general purpose of this here is that you're going to demonstrate your knowledge of the structures and functions of plants. So ideally, for example, if you pick rows, uh, and you talk about the rose, you do need to at least tell me a little bit about the anatomy of the plant within the context of your presentation. So tell me about the anatomy of a rose, like of the actual rose blossom. Um, 
what am I looking at when I look at a rose? Um, that information has to be included because that's that's sort of the point of the project here is that you're incorporating some of your knowledge. Um, or you could talk about the stem of the bamboo. You know, why is the stem of the bamboo different? Um, why is it, you know, is particularly... Um, and so you, you can incorporate the anatomy that you've learned by discussing its importance, okay? And then yeah, the second part here is just obviously to tell me what, what you learned, what the significance of your plant, okay? And that can be very broad. So the first part here is just to tell me about, um, well, so you have a title slide and then you're gonna describe your plant, give me its scientific and common name, um, what type of plant is it? So this is wide open, it doesn't have to be flowering plant. We've mostly been talking about flowering plants, but it could be a bryophyte, that's a, like a moss, a pteridophyte, which is ferns, uh, gymnosperm, evergreens, monocots or dicots. Show a diagram of the plant. You don't need to draw that one specifically. You can find a diagram, but describe some of the key structural features of your plant. Why is it important? What are some key structural things? If I saw this plant out in nature or on a farm or whatever, what would I be looking at that would tell me it's a bamboo or whatever? Okay. Then you're going to describe the life cycle of your plant. So um, it would be good to have a visual life cycle of a plant. Maybe on your visual life cycle, label it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. Uh, and then just describe each of the steps of its life cycle. Um, is there a uh, pollinator involved that has to carry pollen from the ma male part to the female part? Um, does it produce sexually? Does it produce asexually? How does that work? How long does each part of the life cycle last? Is it germinating for a year? Is it germinating for a week? Is it mature for 10 years before it produces flowers? You know, tell me about that stuff. Okay, so this is the, that's the life cycle component. For the significance, this is where you're going to get into the actual significance of humanity of your plant. So tell me about all the modalities of significance. Modalities are just ways, ways in which it is significant. So which ways are the, is the plant used? Um, what part of the plant is specifically used? So, um, you know, we're talking about hemp hearts. What is a hemp heart? Like, what part of the plant is that? Um, you know what part is used in producing cloth uh, etc okay so that's so tell me that that's where you're going to get into the anatomy component right what what is the important anatomy of the plant that's being used for this purpose okay i have put in here an example i said like the ground tissue in bamboo stem that's the uh the tissue that is in the um the stalk it has a very high silica content and it makes it very resistant to termites which is a problem. Termites are a problem, especially in environments where you're building with cactus, uh, not cactus, uh, building with um, bamboo. Uh, and so it makes the structures very resistant to termites. Cool. So that is a structural uh, anatomical characteristic of bamboo that is important. It's important for its use. So, uh, and you could talk about what aspects of the bamboo make it structurally um, strong or whatever. Okay. And then tell me a little bit about the history significance of your plant. Um, you know, was it always used as a building material? Is that a modern, uh, very recent phenomenon, etc.? Okay, so you're going to tell me about the history of its significance, how, how its significance to humans has changed over time. Maybe we used it a thousand years ago. Maybe we don't use it now. I don't know. So tell me about that. And then you're just going to end with the works cited. Okay, so this is all just about d t doing a deep dive on the importance of one particular plant. Uh, we'll be getting our marks for meiosis live. Yes. So I am in the midst of maybe three quarters done marking in the meiosis live projects. This week is my goal to get people marks at least for the first of the two units um, uh, that I've got to mark. Uh, and then the second one uh, follow, following shortly. So um, soon. I will give you a mark update. You'll definitely know your mark heading into the last block. So you'll, you'll have an updated mark and you'll know exactly what you're doing. Uh, I'm working on it. So the, the, it's, watching this presentation takes a super long time, but I'm getting through them. Um, but anyway, yes, the short answer to that question is yes, relatively soon. Um, okay, that is it for the project. Again, you do not have to start that today. Uh, but if you have some free time before the day that you come back to this course, you may want to glance at it. Um, and I, I'm letting you know so that you just know that that's coming on the day that you're coming back and it doesn't like blindside you um, because it's going to move fairly quick. I don't know. I'm sure you guys have looked at the calendar, but the calendar um, does not leave a lot of room for extending deadlines. So 
let me just pull it up real quick so you can see it. So you guys are going to come back on Monday, January 25th. That's the last day of the plants unit. Oh, perfect. Kale, that's exactly what I'm talking about right now. So you're going to come back from your other course on Monday, January 25th. Uh, and we have five days to complete the course. That Monday is the last day of the plants unit, so you're going to be completing this project. It's due the next day. Again, so this is just quick timelines. Um, and then th we're going to be writing the quiz. Then on Tuesday, we're going to be starting the next unit, the evolution unit, and we have four days of the evolution unit. Uh, I'll give you the project on the first day, like let you know what it is. It's due on the weekend, okay? ideally by Saturday. The reason I have to get it in so quick is I have to mark it basically immediately um, because um, your report cards are due at the end of February 2nd. So I have to have everything marked. I have to follow up with students that haven't handed stuff in to try and get them to hand stuff in um, in order to ensure that they get their credit for this course. Uh, and then it's all got to be done by the end of the day on Tuesday, February 2nd because then that's when I submit your marks and failure forms and whatever for students that were unsuccessful. Uh, and then and then that's it. That's the end of the quad. And then we start the next quad. So it's it's a really fast turnaround. Um, and that's that's why I wanted to make sure that you knew this project was coming up. I, I, I'm not trying to blindside anybody with it, but you don't have to start it today. Obviously, there's there's like weeks in between here. So um, uh, there's two weeks and two days in between today and the next time that you're in this course. So oh, it feels like it's forever away. It'll come quickly. But um, anyway, this calendar is posted. So if, I, I, you probably already looked at it. But um, if you look in under the uh, f first unit here, introduction and safety, it's it's actually just posted under day one here, quadmaster two schedule. The schedule is unchanged. So uh, and some people have asked me about the, the last two days. These days right here, uh, in support instructional, they haven't really changed these days uh, from last quad. They are meant to be a place where you try a course survey, um, but uh, or and potentially catch up on stuff that you're missing, but they, you're really not presenting new material during this time. So if you're done the entire course, these days are free for you. So, woo! If you, if you stay caught up and... Uh, please try, try and stay caught up. It's it's really insane. If you hand in your project on this day, uh, it pre or any project on this day, it pretty much means that I need to stay up all night. I got to mark all this. That's what I do last quad. Um, because I, I have to get in your marks, I mean, technically the same day, although it's not really possible. I, Wednesday at 8 a.m. then would be like my absolute drop dead deadline that I have to get that stuff in. And it, it's really intense. So if you know if, if 20 projects come in on this day it's like the worst day of my life so please don't do that i strongly encourage you to complete things uh at the deadline otherwise uh, it's not not gonna be pretty so anyway uh that's that's really i've got all i gotta tell you here um if if you wouldn't mind before you start the content for today um if you wouldn't mind quickly doing that course survey i'd really appreciate it i'd like to get your feedback i uh, potentially changing the course for when we come back does anybody else have any questions here before we move on and get started? I'll summarize while I'm waiting. Um, so course survey, watch this video, do this lesson on transport and plants. There are some questions from the text and an exit quiz. If you have time in block one, read the introduction of flowers on page 14 in your course notes. We're going to do a flower dissection starting at 11.05, also take attendance. Uh, then there's going to be a short reading from the text, page 598. There are some questions that go along with it and a documentary. It's about 45 minutes long, I believe, the documentary. It is extremely good. There are a couple questions and an exit quiz. And that is today. Okay, I don't see any questions. If you do have any, I'm going to be here the entire time. Oh, here we go. That's correct. It's due Tuesday the next day. There's really no other way for me to do it um, and still actually get it marked um, for report cards. So uh, it's a tight timeline. <laughs> if, it's, if it's really going to be a problem for you getting it in by the next day, like email me. Email me and we'll, we'll try and make an accommodation. But I, I can't get them all late. Like if I, if I even move it by one day, the amount of actual video I have to watch by the time they're due 
is too much hours of video per day to to actually get them done before the report cards. If each presentation is, is seven minutes long, some of them are longer. People often make them longer. Uh, it adds up very quickly. It turns into like four or five hours of watching videos. Uh, and I, I, I just I don't have the time in my day to actually watch them all. So and I have to, you know, watch them carefully and and make give you feedback. And, you know, I, I'm not just like casually watching them when I watch them. So so I, I'm sorry about the timelines. It, it really does suck. I, I realize that. Uh, but you are going to have time to work on it in class. So uh, all of learning block two on that day, it's like two hours. Basically, you have to work on it. So. <sighs> we'll do our best guys I, I i don't i don't love doing this like i don't love this timeline but we gotta work with it anyway any other questions anyway let me know in the chat drop me an email uh i will be available uh what should i do about my chromebook situation <laughs> ella are you able to contact mr frick do you know his email? They may be able to just send you a new Chromebook while yours is repaired. Um, let me email you. I'm, I'll, I'm gonna here, I'll make a list. I gotta look up that cactus flower and I gotta email you. Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll send you an email. Um, any other questions? Okay, again, I'll be here uh, all day. Hey guys, welcome back. I noticed people are already posting in the chat that they're here. Sorry, I just took an extra second. I was uh, grabbing our flower for the flower dissection. Um, I'm going to set up my camera over here in a second. Just let me take attendance real quick. Uh, and then we're going to take a peek inside this flower, inside the parts. So yeah, let me know if you're here. Just give me one second. I got to do attendance, okay? So, um, okay, what's the best way to do this? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my iPad up. My, uh, my son is going to join us. Right, Liam? And he just might be able to help out a little bit. I can learn some things to, about a flower as well. You can still see. I can still see. You can still see? Okay. Yeah. Camera. Oh, perfect. Good view. Let's just get this up on the screen here. So Liam, this is what people at home can see. This right here. I'm gonna actually try and make this a little bit bigger. There we 
go. Okay. If you've got a flower at home, you can follow along with your flower. Uh, if you've got a bud, you can try cutting the bud in half. I've, um, I've got a paring knife here that I, I t attempted to sharpen. Um, I don't think I did a very good job. <laughs> so it's not as sharp as it would probably be a good idea. If you're using a sharp uh, knife from your kitchen, just be careful, don't cut yourself. Um, I started off here with a sharp kitchen knife and I already, you can't really see my Band-Aid, where is it? I already cut myself, so <laughs> I decided to downgrade to a slightly smaller knife for ease of use. I thought I had a scalpel at home, but I do not, so uh, we'll make the best. I'm sure, I'm sure I'll be able to cut it open with this at least, somewhat. Okay, so first of all, um, often on the outside of flowers, you will see some green, what look like petals at the base of the flower. Now this flower does not have that, but those green um, petals at the bottom are called sepals. And they usually encase the flower before it blossoms. So this blossom doesn't have a case around it before it actually blossoms. You can, you can actually see the red petals on the inside before it fully blossoms. Um, and so there's no sepals. So, so this particular one doesn't have protective sepals around the flower, but many flowers do. So if, if you're looking at your flower at home, you might have some protective sepals on the outside. Um, obviously, these are the petals, so that would be the part that you already know. All right, Liam, you know about these petals. Do you want to take off some petals? You can show them to the camera here. Pull, pull that petal off. Yeah. Yeah, and then can you show it to the camera over here? All right. So this is a petal. Petals are kind of cool. Um, when you look at a gene express, the gene expression that's going on inside these things, they're they're very similar to a leaf. So th they basically are leaves from the plant, um, and but they've they've been modified obviously with color. When you guys watch the documentary afterwards, um, they spent some time discussing how these are specially adapted to attract pollinators. Uh, color is one thing. So um, bright colors often attract pollinators. Um, but another cool feature of these is that they reflect UV, different amounts of UV, and often they have patterns on them uh, in reflected UV because a lot of insects that pollinate, like bees, can see outside of the regular visual spectrum. They can see the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. So there might be a separate design on here that's attractive for bees. I, I can't see it because I'm not able to see into the UV spectrum, neither is this camera. Um, but there are some examples of it in the documentary. They show what those additional patterns look like. So that's kind of cool. That's stuff that we can't see that's on flowers. So these are specially adapted for, um, mostly for attracting pollinators. Liam, do you remember what pollinators are for? Why do you need a pollinator to come to your flower? So it grows. So, so it grows, and, and what, what does the flower want to do? Make babies, that's right. This is for this is the plant's thing that they use to make babies. Right, and it needs a pollinator to come and make babies. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove my petals so that we can focus in on these little organs that are at the top of the flower. This, um, this flower is what's called a perfect flower. And the reason it's called a perfect flower is because it has male parts on it, boy parts, and it has female parts, girl parts on it. Not every flower has that. So some flowers only have the boy parts and some flowers only have the girl parts. The reason that you'd only wanna have one of them is because this flower, this plant, doesn't wanna make babies with itself. So there, you don't get a lot of genetic variety when you clone yourself, when you make babies with yourself. So it's, it's some plant's strategy in order to do that is to have them be on totally separate flowers so you don't accidentally make a baby with yourself. This plant has a slightly different strategy which is that it elevates its girl part over top of the boy parts to hopefully make sure that you don't accidentally pollinate yourself, although I'm sure it still happens. Um, some flowers have other strategies, like they, their pollen sacs in the male parts only come out at certain times, and then the part where, the time where this is active, the girl part, is a different time than when the boy part is active. And actually, this is really cool. You can see all the pollen. This is pollen right here, this yellow stuff, buddy. So that's coming off of here. That's the boy parts. That's part of the coming out of the boy parts. So this is, you know, you know that when the ba when you make a baby, you need part from a boy and you need part from a girl, right? And so this is the part that is the boy part to make a baby plant. And the girl part 
is actually up here, this thing right here. Okay, for you people at home, this girl part up here is called the stigma. The very, very top part is called the stigma, and it is sticky. Um, and the reason it's sticky is so that the pollen sticks to it. Once some pollen sticks to it, the, the pollen grain, they're really cool, will grow a little tube down from the stigma through this tube right here. So this tube is called the style. So it goes down through the style and then it'll go to the very bottom. So we're gonna, I'm gonna cut open the bottom part here so you can see, let's take the petals off so we're able to see all of this. I'll, I'll cut away some of this too because there's, there's a bunch of extra sort of material at the bottom in there. Oh, I might just be able to pull it off with my knife. I'm hesitant to use this knife because it's not it's not very sharp. It's not a scalpel. So, oh, you know what? It's not that bad. It's not that bad. I guess my knife sharpening did something. Actually, I think in order to make this easier, I'm going to remove all the boy parts. And Liam, I'm going to get you to do that part, okay? Can you come a little bit closer? Yeah, you're just going to pull them off with your hand, okay? So these... These things right here that are sticking up, these are the boy parts. So this stick that the boy part is sitting on is called a filament. The filament holds up the very top part here, which is called the anther. The anther is this tiny little guy on top, and they're usually on there pretty loose. You can just see they're kind of like just jingling on there. That's how you can tell the difference between a girl part and a boy part. So the, the boy part is usually pretty loose, and the reason why it's so loose on there is so that it easily can brush up against the bee or whatever the pollinator is. And also some plant strategy is that they have these fall off um, before their girl part becomes active, their um, stigma becomes active uh, in order to prevent them from pollinating themselves and making babies with themselves. So all the ones that have a yellow stick at the end here, buddy, that little thing at the end is called an anther and the anther has the pollen in it. You can pull these off, okay? Anything with the yellow one, come on over. So anything that has a yellow little stick at the end, you can pull that whole stick off. All right? Like, not like that? Not that one. Any, all of them except for that one. That one is the girl part. The stigma and the style. So you want to pull the whole stick off. So you can grab it right here and just pull the whole stick off. Yep, good job. So make sure that it has a yellow thing at the end first. Yep, there you go. Yep, got it. Yep, good job. Oh, not that one. All of them except for that one. I'll flip it over so you can grab the other parts. Good job. One more. Perfect. Okay, so once you do that, thank you. Once you do that, uh, and it makes it a lot easier to see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually remove the, the bottom parts of these petals so you can see the very base down here. So these are just, this is just the base of the petals. So nothing, nothing special here. And then we're left over with this right here at the bottom. So as I mentioned, once the pollen uh, gets attached here to the stigma on the end, it's gonna grow a little tube. Oh, why is that out of focus? That's annoying. Is there a way to make this zoom in? Nope, don't like that. Let me make this zoom in. Nope, wrong button. Oh, over here. Wait, five. No, that's not what I want. Okay, well, good enough. I was hoping that I'd be able to get this in focus, but you know what? iPads are not meant to take pictures of tiny, teeny, tiny things. What if I did this? Will it focus on that? Yeah, maybe not. I want to be able to see the structures on the end here. You can't really see them. Anyway, there it is. So that the pollen on the grain is going to attach to that. It's going to grow a little tube down here through the style and into the... Uh, ovary at the bottom down here. So, uh, let me cut this open so we can see it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this directly in half. If you have one of these, this is the part that it's helpful to cut directly in half. Careful, shaky hands, calm down, beagle man. I got it. I think I got it. Yep, perfect, perfect. So this is the part where it would be really helpful if you had, um, oh, actually you might be able to see it on camera here. So this is the ovary at the bottom. And if you can see those little white 
circles on there. But do you want to come closer? Do you see the little white circles on here? Yeah. Those are actually eggs. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So they're called ovules for plants. Those are plant eggs, though. And each one of those little eggs in there, if it gets some pollen inside of it, that is going to end up becoming a... Do you know what it becomes that you can make a new plant with? Seed! That's right. Each one of these is going to become a seed. So some um, ovaries in plants only have one ovule, so they only make one big seed. So what's a fruit that you eat that only has one big seed in it? A pear? Oh, I can't remember eating a pear recently. How many seeds are in a pear? I feel like there's a bunch of seeds in a pear. What, what's something that you eat that has one big seed right in the middle? Avocado, good job. So that's something that has one uh, ovule, one inside. So if you were to look inside an avocado flower, there would only be one single ovule in the middle. And that's going to make one seed. But this one has a whole bunch. So when this one makes a fruit at the end, there's going to be a whole bunch of seeds. So this, um, this uh, ovary at the bottom, this whole case right here, is what is eventually going to become the fruit of this plant. And all flowering plants have fruits. Some of them are not very tasty. Have you ever seen a maple key before, Liam? Don't get that, please. You know, you know those things that fall off of maple trees and then they spin when they go to the ground? That's called a maple key. That's actually part of the fruit from the maple plant. Doesn't, doesn't seem like a good fruit to eat, does it? So not all of them are good to eat. Not all the fruits are good to eat. But some of them are nice and good to eat, like an avocado or a pear or an apple. So all of those are made out of the ovary of the plant. They will become that. And why do you think... Why do you think that a plant would want to make a delicious thing to put its seeds in? Why do you think? I'm not sure, eh? You're not sure why a plant would put some delicious stuff around its seeds? That's a weird thing to do, isn't it? That would be like if we had a baby and we put it in a delicious apple when we made it. That's it. People don't need to do that, though, do they? Plants need to do that because they need to move their seeds to a new home. You don't want to plant your baby tree or your baby plant right beside your plant because then it won't get sunlight and then you have to compete with it for food and stuff. So if you put it in a delicious fruit, maybe an animal would pick it up and it will take your seeds to a new place. And then you can spread your seeds around to a whole bunch of new places. Um, good question. So it depends on what we call a vegetable. So we have like sort of like common language where we use the word vegetable. Like, for example, we call, like, a cucumber a vegetable. Um, from, like, a scientific perspective, a cucumber is a fruit. <laughs> it definitely is a fruit because it has seeds inside it. Um, and it's made out of the ovary from the plant. So if it's, it's, if it's from the plant ovary, it's definitely a fruit. Uh, tomato is another good example of something we call a vegetable, but it's, it's definitely a fruit. So, uh, I mean, at least in scientific terms, it's a fruit. So we, we kind of have, like, sort of, like, a, the common word vegetable um, but it doesn't really mean very much that, that those things are fruit anyway from like a scientific perspective they're the fruit of the plant um, there are some things like um, carrots or potatoes or something like that those are the roots of the plant right so that would be like a true vegetable it's not it's not actually the fruit of the plant if we're eating like something other than the ovary um, but when it comes to like culinary terminology like it's kind of all over the place. So it really it really doesn't necessarily have anything to do with what the structure physically is. And, and, and from a scientific perspective, anything that is the ovary of the plant is a fruit. So that so this this is this would be like an apple or an, uh, even an orange, uh, a cucumber, a avocado, those things are all fruits. Cool. Okay. So that is actually all the parts of the flower. This is not a uh, this is not super in depth here. <laughs> they're, they're, uh, so one thing I wanted to point out, um, sweetie, that that that's all for my flower dissection. So if, if you want to go back and play, you're welcome to do that. Okay. Thank you for helping me. I appreciate it. Bye. Give me one sec. I just want to show some examples of flowers that don't look like this flower but still have the same parts but they look a little bit different so give me give me one shake here
I bet if I just type in flowers here, I can find some lots of examples of this. Uh, here we go. Oh, so a lot of these are perfect flowers. Um, like, for example, here you can see the very clear female structure in the center and then the male structure um, that are producing pollen around the outside. Um, some of them have multiple female structures. So you'll actually see multiple uh, stigmas and styles on the plant. There won't just be one. Um, but some of them are a little bit more difficult to find. Uh, there's an example where they're different colors. Um, here's an example of one that only has one. This is a lily. Um, so most lilies I don't think are perfect flowers. So I think that this one right here is, those are little pollen sacs on the inside. Uh, and so that's a slightly different structure for the, for the filaments. The filament might be like one main body that has many uh, anthers on top of it. So that, that's one variation that you can see. Um, here's a weird one. So this one has all of the anthers on filaments in the center, and then it has its female parts uh, attached or they would be down inside of those outside structures. They look like separate flowers. They're all actually part of the same flower. Um, and they would have their stigmas. Uh, you can kind of see them here within each of these flowers. Uh, and then at the bottom, there would be an ovary at the bottom of each of those. So each one is going to form its own fruit probably. Um, this one has the female part buried deep in the flower. So it's got its filaments up high um, with its anthers up high. And then the stigma is low. Um, that's not what I was looking for, though. I wanted to show you an example of uh, a flower where the stick, where the stigma looks almost exactly the same as an anther. Um, it's very difficult to tell where one ends and then the other one begins. Um, oh, yeah, like a a good example would be a sunflower. Let's look at a sunflower. So a sunflower is a perfect flower. Ooh, not sub. Oh, that worked anyway. Google knows what I'm talking about. Um, so here, so th this is a lot more difficult to tell what's going on. So that we, here we have the anther and the pollen sacs that are around the outside. And the structure in the center is actually a whole bunch of stigmas. So there's a bunch of stigmas in the middle. And each stigma is going to go down into a single seeded ovary. And then that, that is going to become a seed. So if you've ever seen a mature um, sunflower, you know that there's like a whole bunch of sunflower seeds in the middle of this. They're, each one is going to form like separately in this pattern in the center. And so in, in order for that to happen, there has to be a stigma there um, at each spot. And they're, they're really small. I mean, they're really hard to see from this picture. But, but there are stigmas all around in the center there, and each going down to a separate seed. So there are a whole bunch of different variations of this. And like I said, it's, many of these are perfect flowers where they have the male parts somewhere and the female parts in a different spot, usually somehow separated so they're trying not to fertilize themselves um, because, because again, variety means survival here. So you don't want to self-fertilize too much. Um, but, um, but some of them are not perfect flowers. So they will produce flowers that only have a stigma in the center or several stigma. And then there will be other flowers that only have anthers and, uh, and filaments. So there's a whole bunch of different variety. And so depending on what you have at home, if you were looking at a flower, um, you may not have the exact same configuration, but all the parts are generally there. Um, so you gotta have somewhere on the plant, there's gotta be male parts and somewhere there's gotta be female parts. They might not be in the same flower, but most uh, plants produce both. Although there are plants as well, again, there's lots of variety in nature, where a specific plant will only produce a female part on its flowers, and then another member of the population will produce only the male parts. Um, or they would maybe alternate from year to year, or again, lots of variety in nature. There's no like scripted way that flowers have to work, uh, but they generally have these same structures. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna say about uh, flowers. Um, Evan, did I answer your question about vegetables? Most vegetables are fruits, um, the, at least the, we say culinary vegetables, um, but not all of them. So some of them are roots and stuff like that, and we wouldn't call them 
Uh, we wouldn't call them fruits. Uh, okay, so what are you guys going to do now? If you haven't already done so, uh, there's a little intro to flowers on page 14 in the course notes, so you read that. Um, you're going to read page 598 in the text, which just goes through these plant part, uh, these flower parts again in a little bit more detail. It talks about their structure and function. Um, and you can also, which uh, if you haven't done so already, just see if you can find them on a plant at home, on a flower at home. Um, it would even be helpful if you just searched up a flower that you like, a rose, uh, whatever. See if you can get a detailed high, like a high depth view of one and see if you can just find these parts on it. Um, be interesting to do that. Um, there is a table that is on that flower note that just where you're just going to very quickly summarize um, what is the function of each of these parts. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Evan. And um, then there is this documentary. Uh, highly recommend it. It's a great documentary. Um, even people that are not into, you know, science documentaries, like my mom loved this thing. Uh, so I highly recommend it. I love that guy's accent as well. And there are a couple questions for you to do, plus a little exit quiz. Okay, I won't take up any more of your time, and I'll let you get started. I'll be here the entire time. Uh, let me know if you need anything. Email me. Uh, post in the chat. Um, and uh, I probably am not going to see you here now. Uh, it's, it's Wednesday, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, for a couple weeks, which is weird. But keep in mind that during those couple weeks, if you need anything, uh, you're working on an assignment that you is late or whatever, um, or you just have a question about the course, I, I'm not. I'm not like gone. I am available, so just just email me. I'll be available in the Google Meet today if you have any questions about any of the content from today uh, and you want to just chat in a Google Meet, I'll be available during block three. And um, do your best, if you do owe me anything, to try and get it in as soon as possible because uh, it's a whole bunch of stuff I got to do over the next couple of weeks here in preparation for next quad. And, uh, and also I got to mark all of your stuff or at least continue marking your stuff. So please try not to get that stuff in super late. It makes it makes it insane to get everything done. So um, do your best. Uh, and let me know if you're really struggling, guys. I, I'm here to help you out. Okay. Okay. All right. Good luck and good luck with your other course. I will see you in uh, a week, two weeks, and two days. Uh, if you, um, unless you are catching me in the Google Meet.